All right, this is section 3.2, uh, number four, the graph of a function. Um, I wanted to make a separate video um, just strictly using the graphing calculator to show you how to uh, manipulate it and um, answer all parts of this question using that calculator. So um, one of the first things I do want to show you or remind you of is how to clear the calculator um, because sometimes you will change the settings and um, those settings will save and if you just need to restart um, and get back to the standard settings then you want to reset and clear all the data the way you do that is you hit this second button and then you come down here the plus sign is MEM above it is memory so whenever you hit this second button it might be a different color on yours but it's going to give you access to all the words in blue okay so we want to go to memory second plus and then we're going to do the number 7 to reset, the number 1, and then the number 2. Okay, so I'm going to try to write all these steps down so you have them as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to say clear calculator. And you do that by pushing 2nd. And then the plus sign and the number seven, then the number one, and then the number two. So this will reset your calculator. Okay, now <clears throat> from here we're going to solve this equation. So what's going on? We have a golf ball hit with initial velocity of 150 feet per second at an inclination of 45 degrees to the horizontal. In physics, it is established that the height of the golf ball is given by the function. And so this is the most important thing. So this equation is giving us the height, h, and they tell you that. So this is giving us the height. And then it says where x is the horizontal distance. And we're going to complete parts a through g. So the most important part of this, you may not understand all the things going on in the physics, but it's telling us a golf ball is hit, and we have a height function, and we also will get the distance. So in this problem, okay, this is what's going on. Okay, we have somebody hitting a golf ball, um, and it's also giving you kind of like the angle. So this angle is like a 45 degree. So there's other mathematics you can use to kind of solve this if you knew more. So this golf ball is getting hit and this y-axis is the h the height and x-axis is the distance but we're hitting the golf balls going up and then it's coming back down <clears throat> but what we need is just the equation so we're going to plug that in go to y equal and then we're going to graph the equation just like it is so what I recommend is that you put the numerator in parentheses and the denominator in parentheses to avoid any mistakes. So what I'm going to do in the calculator, open parentheses, negative 32x squared. Close it, divide it by, and then open parentheses for the bottom. And then this is 150 squared. Close it, and then that's the fraction, and then we have plus x. So this is the way, if you have a fraction, I recommend you put it in. Now this calculator can input um, the fraction just like it is um, and I will show you both um, and I'll show you the difference between both just so you have that alright so in order to input a fraction I'm just going to say fraction mode <clears throat> you're going to go and hit the green alpha button alpha and then you're going to hit the y equal button and then you're going to hit enter alpha y equal enter so I'm going to insert this equation just like this so I'm going to do a parentheses uh, negative 32 and then the X is the button right next to the alpha key, X. And then the squared is right here, it's X squared, right up and to the left of 7. And then close parentheses. 
and then divide it by open parentheses 150 and then that square button again close parentheses and then we have this additional plus x so plus um, the x is up here by alpha okay so <clears throat> this is what we originally get so I'm gonna hit graph I'm probably not gonna see anything because these numbers are really big but this is part of the graph it goes in the negative section now um, I'm also going to show you the table second graph um, you can see the the order pairs so I'm gonna do the same thing um, with uh, the fraction notation so if I go to y equal and I arrow down um, I'm gonna put this in fraction mode so doing this alpha y equal enter so alpha y equal and then it gives you a drop down menu just hit enter and it gives you the option to make a fraction so now I'm gonna type it in just like this now when you do the fraction mode you don't have to have the parentheses okay it's going to um, do it automatically so negative 32 um, x squared and then I'm gonna arrow down and then do the 150 um, squared and then arrow over and then do plus x okay. so if I graph this I'm gonna arrow back because it's going to be the same exact line um, I want to make it do a different um, graphing technique so you can see that it's tracing the same line so if you arrow all the way to the front of y equal and then you hit enter it'll make it bold I'm gonna hit enter again that would shade above the line that will be below the line again and then this with the zero look like, like a line or zero with a tail um, will just trace over the line so I'm gonna hit graph you know see the line that we already have is just being traced it's the same equation okay. so just a different um, method for inputting the graph when you have um, the 84 so now if I look at the table second graph to see table these since I put it in fraction form is giving you your answers in fraction form okay so they both are the same okay but this is just giving it to you in fraction form so um, I think for our problem we actually want to see the decimal value um, that's the only difference if you put it in fraction form the, the calculator will give it to you in the form that you entered it and then if you put it in decimal form um, it will give it to you in decimal form so that is the difference um, between these so I'm gonna go back to y equal and I'm just going to come down to y2 and I'm gonna hit enter right here um, what that does is it turns that graph off so you see how the equal sign is bold this one is not when I go back to second graph to see the table I no longer see those values okay so even though that equation is still there um, it's not um, outputting because I've turned it off um, this is the one we're going to focus on so now we want to complete parts A through G okay um, it says determine the height of the golf ball after it has traveled 100 feet okay so right now if I hit graph we only see a 10 by 10 window so if I was to try to compute this um, I would not get any value because 100 is off the viewing window it's outside of the the view so I need to change my window my range so that it fits now so I'm gonna go to window and since this is a real-world problem I don't need any negative X values because our golf ball starts at zero okay so it doesn't go past we don't have a negative yards or negative distance so I'm gonna start at zero and since I have to go up to a hundred I want to go something greater than so I can see it so let's just go up to like 500 and this you have to determine problem to problem and just change and play with um, the distances now as far as height we don't have any height associated yet but we will not go below the ground so we'll start at zero and then let's also just go to 500 just for the sake of it they don't have to be the same but um, let's just do it to see what's going on so I'm gonna hit graph again and you kind of see that general shape that we've drawn here and then there's the easiest way I guess to input a value is just to hit trace 
Okay, trace is right below the calculate button. If you hit trace, your cursor will come up. And then we want um, the ball to have traveled 100 feet. That means distance. So you hit trace, and then you enter the number. So I'm going to enter 100. 100. And that's saying the distance is 100. If I hit enter, it gives me the Y value. That's 85.77. We want to round the two decimal places, so we're going to go to the third value. We're going to round that up, so 85.78. Okay, so now part two wants us to do um, 250 feet. So once you've already hit trace and that, that cursor is there, you don't have to do it again. All you have to do is enter the next number. So 250. And then hit enter. We get 161.11. And then part three wants to know what is h of 350. Okay, so just recall, this is a function notation, so they have it, h of x is equal to the negative 32x squared over 150 squared, I don't know why I put a zero up there, 150 squared plus x. So all they're doing is saying plug in 350 for x. So it's just a different notation, but it, it means the same thing. So all we have to do now with our calculator is tell it to calculate 350. So 350, and then hit enter. And then um, we get 175.78 if we round to two decimal places. 175.78. Okay, so let me show you <clears throat> another method, and it, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to show you. If I just hit graph and start here, it will not allow me to type 100, like if I wanted to do the first part. If I type 1, it just goes back to the home screen, okay? So when you want to input a value, you have to hit trace. Now, the other method to doing that is going second and then trace for calculate. Calculate will bring down a menu of different things you can do and um, if you want to just insert a value just hit enter on the first one and it's waiting for the X input so that's an alternative alternate method to get there but it's easier just to hit trace and it just you can type in whatever you want and it just trace will just trace along that graph and you can see several values but it's not going one at a time it's kinda of like skipping and jumping I don't know how to determine what it's counting by it's not even the same every time, um, but um, that's what trace is doing is just allowing you to input a shortcut. Okay, so now we need to interpret what we've just computed. Um, H of 350, what does that mean? Well, remember, X is the distance. So that means this golf ball has traveled 350 feet, and then the value we got, this is the height, okay, as you can see. The X value is going over, the Y value is increasing going up. So this is the distance. It says, uh, B says at a height of 350, which 350 is the distance. So A says the golf ball, the height of the golf ball after it has traveled a horizontal distance of 350, which is what we're looking for, is what we just answered in the previous question. So I just want you to interpret it, 175.78. back and look at what they're seeing. The height of the golf ball after it has traveled a distance of 350 feet. Oh, I just typed in the answer wrong. I, I typed 178. I need to type 175. Okay. Okay, so now we want to know how far was the golf ball hit. <clears throat> so, right now, we cannot see where it goes back and hits the ground. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do um, window, and then we're going to increase our X maximum. So let's say 800. And again, this is just you have to play with it and try different values to see what fits the data that you have. 
and then we're going to go to graph and see what we see. Okay, so <clears throat> here we are getting and wanting to know when the golf ball is back at a height of zero. How far was it hit? I think there's a couple methods. One, you can do second and trace um, and then do zero. So zero is finding when the x value is, I think the y value is zero, the y value is zero. Because um, I think if we want to find when x is zero, I can just, yeah, x is zero is <clears throat> just only going to give me the y intercept. Um, I need to find out when y is zero, so I want to do zero here. Um, and then it says left bound. So I want to be on the left hand side of where I think that zero is. And right now, let me just go back to graph. That zero is over here. So I just need to be, I can be anywhere over here um, right now, which is totally fine. So I'm going to go back to second and calculate. And we're going to find the zero. And it says left bound. So my cursor is already on the left hand side of where that zero is. So here's a picture. Here's where that zero is. That's what I'm trying to find. And that'll give me the distance. So I'm going to hit enter. And then it wants me to go to the right side. So I have to arrow this cursor. Now I'm looking at the Y value is decreasing. I want that Y value to be negative. I want it to be all the way past. So right now Y is negative. So even though the golf ball won't go below the ground, okay, I can move that cursor over here. And what we're doing is we're trapping where that zero happens. And the calculator is going to find that exact point. But we got to tell it where to look. Um, and you can go as far past as you want to. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to hit enter now, and now it says guess, you don't have to guess, and then it shows you y is 0, and then x is 703, 125. Okay, so that's one method, 703, 125. Um, and then it says type 2 decimal places, so look at that value again, 703, 13. Okay, so that's one method. And how you do that again is you go second, calculate, and then you got to go to zero and you got to arrow left of it, right of it, and then trap it there. Now there's another method to do that. Um, I'm going to go down here to Y2 and I'm going to hit clear. So I'm going to clear that out. And I'm just going to plug in Y equals zero. And then that is going to graph this line. Okay, so when I plug in Y equals zero, y is zero here so it's going to be graphing the x-axis okay so I have an equation here and I have this equation here they intersect right there at zero and I'm gonna have the calculator find that for me <clears throat> so when I hit I'm gonna to come to the very beginning and I'm gonna change it so you can see what it's graphing I'm gonna hit enter about five times till I get that zero with the tail and then I'm gonna hit graph so you see that it's tracing along the x-axis okay? because you don't see anything because the x-axis is already a solid line so I'm just doing this so you can see what it's graphing All right, once that graphs you want to calculate the intersection where do these two lines meet so to do that okay, <clears throat> so to find y equals zero um, you're going to do second and then trace or the calculate button trace which is calculate C A L C and then you're gonna go to two okay and then you're gonna go left enter and then you're gonna go right and then enter and then hit enter a third time now your your calculator could be a little bit different if you're using the phone enter a third time okay so if you're using a phone it could be slightly different but um, you might be able to find some other YouTube videos that could help with that um, but and you could also 
Uh, just play with it and then you'll figure it out because it's not too, too different, but it might be slightly different. So this is one method. The other method, so this is method number two, you're going to do y equal and plug a zero for y2. Okay, so that's y2 plug a zero. Then you're going to go second and then trace or calculate. And then we're going to go to option number five. So you can just hit five. And I'm going to show you what's going to happen now. So I have these two things graphed. I'm going to hit second, calculate. Option number five says intersection. So I'm just going to go down here and hit five. And it's asking me first curve. So some say first curve. Some might say left bound and right bound. So if yours asks left bound and right bound, you're going to do the exact same thing that we did in the previous steps. Mine says first curve. It's asking me the first equation, which is y1. It's showing me the cursor on that equation. I'm going to hit enter. That is one of them that I want. And then it asks second curve. So you can see that cursor. Barely see it. It's blinking. Now look very closely. You can see it blinking on the y <clears throat> equals zero line. And it's showing y2 up here in the corner. I only have those two equations. So that is exactly what I want. I'm going to hit enter. And then it says, do you want to guess? If you do, just move your cursor. <clears throat> close to um, where that intersection is because there are two points where these lines intersect on the graph it starts at zero and it ends at zero if your cursor is close to this one it's going to tell you this value but we want to know the end value we want to know how far the golf ball went so it starts on the ground at zero and then it ends on the ground at zero you need to be close to this point that's why I'm moving this cursor over so that it's close to that point and then it will pick up that value so I hit enter a third time and then it tells me 703.125 so it's the exact same thing that we got um, on the previous one I'm just gonna say from here follow prompt because I don't know if you're gonna have uh, the phone in doing it or the one on the calculator so I'm gonna say follow prompt because it basically tells you um, what to do. So, <clears throat> as you can see, we got the same thing when rounded to two decimal places, both methods. We're going to check, and then that's okay. Um, now we want to change our window, so it's telling us exactly what inputs to use. So we're going to go back to the calculator, go to window, and then we're going to input zero. Look at that! I already got it. Zero to eight hundred, and then the y we want to do 0 to 180 so 0 and I'm going to come down here and make this 180 180 and then they tell me x scale and y scale they tell me what they want the calculator to count by so they want the x scale x axis to count by 100 and then the y scale they want it to count by 20 get those in and then we're going to hit graph and we'll get a picture so that's like a egg shape goes almost to the very top B is the image that matches what we're looking for and then F says use the graphing utility to determine the distance that the ball has traveled when the height of the ball is a hundred feet we're going to choose the correct <coughs> Um, necessary below okay so we want to use a graph and then find the distance when it has traveled a height of 100 feet okay so if you want to find the distance at a height of 100 feet then we have to go to y equal and then put in 100 so it's going to be similar directions to this right here so we're going to be calculating the intersection um, of the graph so I'm going to say intersection I'm just going to kind of point intersection Okay, so instead of a height of zero, this time we want a height of 100. So I'm going to go to Y2 and follow those same instructions. So I'm going to go to Y2, go to Y equal. I'm going to drop down to Y2, and I'm going to enter 100. 
<clears throat> now, the, the reason why you have to do it this way is because if you do second calc, okay, you can only enter a value for x. So this will allow you to enter a value for x. It will not let you enter a value for y. Okay, so the only thing they will give you for y is the zero, which is again like the x-intercept. So um, it's is designed to take inputs for x or find x values um, once inputted, and it will output the y value, or you have to force it by doing um, the intersection. So y equal, type in 100. I'm going to hit graph just so we can see. At 100, we should have a horizontal line crossing. And I didn't really need that line, that zero line, but it's okay. It just graphs a lot slower. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go back and turn it off. Go to Y equal. It's okay that I don't. <clears throat> just hit clear. And then I'm going to type the 100 again. Or you can always arrow back and hit enter a few times and get it back to this line. But if I hit graph, it graphs much faster um, without that tail. Okay, so I want to know when is the ball at a height of 100 feet. There's two spots, so i got to find both of them. So I'm going to follow this prompt. Second, trace, or calculate, and then five. So I'm going to do second, trace, option number five. And then it says first curve. So again, yours might say left bound. So if it says left bound, look at what I'm doing. I'm holding the left arrow key and arrowing on the left side of the first intersection. Ask me second curve or might say right bound. Just arrow to where you're on the right side. So make sure that cursor is, you just want to trap that intersection in between. So I'm going to hit enter again. And then mine says guess. I'm already close to it, so I'm just going to hit enter. So mine says first curve, second curve, guess. Yours could possibly say left bound, right bound. So just follow the prompt, whatever you're given. So the height is at 100 and the x value is at 120 point, we'll say 73. 120.73. Now notice there is another value where they intersect. So I now need to find that one. I'm going to do the same button pushing. I'm going to do second trace. No, not two. Second trace. And then option number five. And then first curve, I'm going to hit enter. Second curve, I'm going to hit enter. It says guess, move that cursor close to the second intersection. And then hit enter. And it will pick up that one. So 582.39, or that will round up to 582.4. 582.4. And then G wants us to create a table. Um, start at zero, count by 25. So start, and then this triangle means change. That's delta, Greek means change. Um, we're going to count by 25. We're going to be changing by 25 to the nearest 25 feet. How far does the ball travel before it reaches a maximum height? Okay, so what we have to do here is we have to go to the table set that's right above window in blue. So to get that one, you're going to do second table set, second, and then the window button. And then you'll input, input, um, input values. And then you do second and then graph to see the table. Second graph to see the table. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go second and then window to access table set. Now here it is. Table start is already on zero and then this is a little triangle table which means what do you want to count by? We're going to input 25 and then once we input those values, we're going to do second graph. So second graph to see the table. And I don't need that one. I couldn't turn that off, but I'm looking at the Y1. And I want to see when do I get a maximum height. 
So I'm just going to start arrowing down, arrow down, 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 and look at the Y values increasing. And when it stops increasing, um, that's when I know I've got my max. So 175.78, and then it drops down to 175. So that's going to be my maximum height, counted by 25s. <clears throat> so to the nearest 25 feet, the ball travels 350 feet before we get to that height, 350. And then we have another part. We want to know what is the maximum height <clears throat> when we get there. So that maximum height was 175.78. And then I think the last part, we're going to adjust the value of the table, the change in table, until we can determine the distance within one foot that the ball travels before it reaches a maximum height. So we're going to go back to the table. So second window. We're going to let it count by ones. Now, the maximum height we just found was at 350, so let's have the table start at 350. And we're only going to go by ones and see um, a little bit closer where it gets to that height. So now we're going to do second graph to see the table. And look, all of these say 175.78, 175.78. So I need to arrow over here and see a more precise decimal value. So this is actually 175 with a bunch of sevens repeating. And now this is actually 178, so that one's actually higher, 178.08. And then this one is 17809, so that one's even higher. And then this one drops back down to 177. So it's rounding to two decimal places, but this one is the one that's the highest. So at a distance of 352, we get 175. So to the nearest feet, how far does it travel before it gets to that height? Um, that was 352. That's the last part, 352. And so if you got lost at all, you can just rewatch this and, and see the steps again. And hopefully that will help you um, begin using this calculator and um, finding some of its functionality when it comes to manipulating it to answer um, graphing questions like this.